Randy says, hey, before I can even get started, it literally shows zero people on, and Randy's already saying, hey. That's how enthusiastic Randy was to get on today. I don't even know that I'm that enthusiastic. What's going on, Randy? Glad you uh, could show up, could make it today. Let me know if the sound and the video is okay. You clean today? Yeah, yeah I've been going for the baby face lately. <laughs> Charlene says, and I made it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Charlene. Hey, my brother is on. Stavro says, hey, hey there. How is everything going? Everything is great. Good. Glad to hear that, uh, Stavro. I'm having a good day, actually. Jim says, howdy. Is, is anybody with you today, Jim, or is it just you? Philip says hi. What's up, uh, what's up, Philip? Thanks for showing. Brian says sound is fine. Good, good, good. Lighting is harsh with the shades in the background. Yeah, well, I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Indica says, "Hey, Chris. Hey, Indica. Yeah, like that, that particular one, the thing that makes it close doesn't work. So, and it's way too big to get a curtain. So, it's hopefully you can deal with it." Ben says, evening, Chris. Good evening, Ben. Giving back always joined on Instagram. Joseph is here and excited. Hey, Joseph, what's going on, buddy? I hope you're keeping Jim in line. I know that's a big task, but you're man enough to do it. Having a little bit of the bubbly today. Get it. The implication there is that it's an alcoholic beverage, but really it's just seltzer water. That's the joke. Rinchen Sun is on Instagram. What's up, Rinchen? We'll give everybody a few minutes to show up and yeah, I don't have anything to say besides show up. Give everybody a few minutes to show up before we get into the topic. It was a really cool article that I only found, he didn't actually even tell me about it. I just found it because uh, I was looking at our traffic and it was bringing some traffic into legit, which is always nice. And I was like, I wonder what this is. Because sometimes I'll find some pretty, uh, like people will try to use like fake traffic sources to drive, to drive. Let me actually talk about that for a second. One thing I've seen is sometimes the people who are so lazy in their marketing that they want to, uh, they, instead of like trying to just go out and like build a list and talk about their services and stuff, they're trying to manipulate our internal algorithm by sending it outside traffic from like pay to click sites where like you put your, your site on there and you pay people to click it. And somehow they think that's going to help them like in the internal algorithm on legit and get more sales. If they spent that same amount of time, effort, and money on like real marketing, they'd probably do well. But anyhow, that's something that amuses me. By the way, that doesn't work. So if you're doing that, stop wasting your time and screwing up our analytics. Brian says, hey, Chris, get a green board. I have like a green thing, but I'm not going to put that up. I'm, I, it's, most days it's fine. And, you know, eventually I'll get maintenance to fix that. But I kind of feel like they have bigger fish to fry right now. So. A little bit sore today. So people still rolling in, piling in, jumping on. But anyhow, yeah, I saw that I saw some traffic coming in from that article, and it's, I decided to go check it out, and it was actually a really cool piece. So I'm glad to have the link from it and the traffic from it and the good word of mouth. Expert Web Design says, "Hey, hey, what's up, Expert Web Design?" So while we're waiting for the room to fill up a little bit, is there anything else you'd like to talk about or any questions you have or anything like that before we really get dig in? Let's see, we got Esteban on Instagram. What's up, Esteban? Legit is on Instagram. What's up, Legit?
John says, I know a handful of people that lost their jobs, unfortunately, because of the thing in the world. I've encouraged all of them to join legit to try and get some income. Well, thank you, John. I hope that they are able to do that. I've, I've done the same for some friends of mine that are in similar situations. Some of them have joined and done well. Some of them are too hard headed to take the opportunity because it's not what they want to do, you know, because apparently you can afford to be picky when you've lost a job that probably won't come back, but I'm not bitter, but really, John, thank you. That's, that's very kind of you. And not just because it helps me, but I really, it does help them. And it's an opportunity for them to maybe not have to go back even when they do, you know? So I hope we're able to help them out. And if there's any way they can get, if there's any way we can help them, just let us know for sure. Oh, what? Whoops. Simo says, hey, Chris. Hey, Simo, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. Pardon me if I if I seem unprofessional or something sitting back like this. But uh, like I mentioned yesterday, I like did something to my shoulder and my back, and it's actually worse today. So I'm trying to stay out of pain is basically what I'm doing. So far, I'm having limited success, but got a soldier on. Like Eminem said, it's till I, till I collapse. Experts uh, Web Design says turn 49 pounds into 10K pounds per month. Let's talk about that. Well, I don't know how to do it in pounds. <laughs> so nah, I'm just screwing with you. But yeah, we're going to talk about that. No, let me actually, while we're waiting, let me go ahead and grab that link so I can drop it in the comments. Brian says, when you purchase a domain name, is there any advantage or disadvantage to having .com slash or, or .com .au .net .org, et cetera? Not really. Uh, in some cases, the really fancy ones, the, the .pizza or whatever, might be a problem because sometimes they won't rank. Sometimes there's certain like citations or directories that you won't be able to list them on. But for the most part, it doesn't matter. There was a time when those those new TLDs wouldn't rank at all, but it doesn't seem to be the case anymore. And Chris showed a link to Indie Hackers. Alexis says, hello, Chris, and fellow legits. Hello, Alexis, always a pleasure. We will go we'll wait another minute or two, then we'll quickly cover today's topic, and then we'll do some questions, answers, and whatever funny thing I promised today. I forget. To be perfectly honest, we'll do that too. Tic-tac-toe. That's what it was. Jim says, I do find a lot of people get confused by some of the fancy TLDs because they don't realize they're actually domain names. That's absolutely true. It, uh, I remember I did a webinar about two and a half years ago and I had them go to a dot rocks domain because I thought it was cool and they would, you know, it would provide a certain culture or something, but it just made people not even realize that it was a URL. And they're like, do I go to, what's the dot com? I'm like, it's dot rock, Never mind. Alexis says, Alexa doesn't acknowledge me anymore. Yes, it does. Every time I say your name, it lights up. It just doesn't do anything because I didn't ask it for anything, but it still lights up every time you do that. Simo says, tell us more about the title. You see, the title is a is text that you put on a video to tell people what it's 
Just kidding, buddy. Yeah, like I said, we're going to get into that. In fact, let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, in this particular article, it was on, like I dropped it in the comments a few minutes ago, down Indie Hackers, which is kind of like a tech blog type of thing. And the the author is a seller on Legit named, uh, I thought it was an interview when, when I uh, made this, but apparently it was his own post. But he owns a, in a couple of businesses, and one of them is a content agency. And on legit, he goes under the name uh, Content Elect, and he does he does good work. I've seen his uh, I bought an order from him, and it, he just goes on to talk about you know how his agency, how he's doing you know over 10k a month with his content agency, and one of the things that he does to get clients is it, and I'll just read the quote. It says at this stage, our primary channels of customer acquisition were. Facebook groups, Facebook advertising, email outreach by the way of Hunter.io and LinkedIn outreach. We also started using the freelance platform marketplace legit as an additional revenue channel. And yeah, and then I spoke to him privately about it. And apparently he's used that to leverage into some higher paying clients as well. So it's the first message there is don't think of when you sign when you get like a five dollar order or a ten dollar order or even in his case, a $49 order, that's how much his service goes for. They don't think that that's the end of the relationship or don't look at it as a $49 sale. First of all, most people will buy from you four times when they buy from you once. So using that four times a month. So using that $49 example, let's just say 50 because the math is easier. 50 times four, that's 200 a month. That's two grand, $2,400 a year. So there's that. And but suppose that they need something more than what you offer. Suppose CMO will use you as an example. Suppose you make them a five or ten dollar logo. Maybe next time they need a you know a, a social media pack, or maybe they have a regular sh stream of clients, and now you become their regular go to graphics person. I was going to come up with a way that you could make a mo monthly thing out of it, but I don't know graphics well enough. But for what for example, I've have one, I had one client that I had for four years that I got from a $5 SIN wire blast sale on, well, a different marketplace. And that was a, that was a thousand dollar a month client. So do the math, you know, that's 12 grand, 12, 24, it's $50,000 that particular one made me. You can take in it, if you can take that, and that's happened several times over the years now, I've turned several like one-off clients into multi, multi month big clients whether it's buying more marketplace services and or whether it's signing them as a regular client. As a matter of fact, Legit itself was built on a sale that I made on another marketplace for 16 bucks. And that's how I met Jim and that's how we built Legit together. And same thing for Superstar Academy. That's how I met Scott and Jeff. And we turned that into a, a I guess it's almost a seven figure course now. So. You know, my point there is that you can easily turn one sale into a multi-month thing. So the trick there is to first find a, I guess the industry term would be, I guess it would be a tripwire. I think that's what digital marketer calls them is a very low in entry point service. Don't be hard headed about that, by the way. There's some people who think they're too good for lower price services and those people are going to fail on legit in other places. So don't be one of them. But, um, you start with something like that. You do a great job. You treat them well. Then you have another tier of offer that you can nat that that naturally segues into. Send them to that with your delivery message. Talk to them about it during the order, and so on. And then you just keep scaling up the the value ladder to until they're either a monthly client or a client that comes to you repeatedly. And if you get enough of those, you can easily take that five dollars and turn it into however much you want. So in Mark's case, it's kind of what he's done is turned those $49 clients of his on legit into, you know, multi-month, multi-month marketing or con I don't to be completely honest. I don't get entirely what he does, but uh, into like a full time. And, and again, they're not all from legit, but into full time clients that pay him regularly for content marketing and things like that. You know, they don't be if don't be as Jim says, don't be afraid to sell a loss leader too. It's totally okay to lose money on an order if you develop a good process to upsell or resell them again for profit. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the way a lot of marketing works. Look at like insurance companies, you know, they they will spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to get a hundred or two hundred dollar a month client because they know that people will be with them forever. And over the course of that lifetime, 
they or the lifetime of that customer, they will con, you know, they'll be a huge profit. And there's other business models like that too. A lot of amateur marketers are either don't have the capital to do that or are afraid to do that. But in the case of something like a marketplace service, you don't have to worry as much about a capital outlay because it doesn't cost you anything. You know, I mean, it may cost you whatever it costs you to fulfill the service. So there may be a little bit of loss there, but for the most part, you don't have an, any expenses. So you can afford to do a five or a 10 or a $49 service and scale that in with up sales and better services and things like that. Not better, but pricier services and things like that. You can get them into your Facebook group, your email list and grow them into training or into consulting or into monthly, excuse me, monthly services or whatever, but don't think of that first sale as the end of the journey. Think of that as the beginning and then use that to build a relationship and scale that into a much more profitable recurring business. I've had several, I've had success with that. Like I said, in numerous different ways, whether it's just signing SEO clients from a $5 SimWire blast growing legit from a $16, you know, well, I don't even remember what it was that Jim bought a $16 service. Uh, See now I'm gonna to have to go think about that, but or uh, you know growing a, a training academy from two like uh, ten or fifteen dollar orders or whatever. But you can take those small orders and build relationships with them and turn them into big time recurring or lifetime clients. And it the numbers back this up. This isn't just like this. You can do that. Like I have numbers that show that any that most customers will buy from the same seller on average four times. So it's, it's, it's fact, it's just up to you to make it work. So, and the way I like to do that is to, like I say, obviously you have to have a great service with something that's easy for people to buy where there's very little risk, treat them well, do a great job. And then in the, both throughout the conversation and on the delivery message, bring them into your bubble, whether it's your Facebook group, your email list, your YouTube channel, whatever your blog, bring them in and keep giving them more value for free. And then when you have something more expensive, they'll either, you can offer it to them or they'll just come to you when they need something more. So I think I've made the point there. I'm actually going to try to get Mark who I'm talking about here that made me think about this topic uh, to come on and do a live stream. I have, I sent him a message. It was, it's, he hasn't been able, he hasn't responded yet. He hasn't seen it yet, but I'm going to try to have him come on and explain how he's doing and what he's doing well and things like that uh, sometime soon. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, uh, that's kind of what I, the main topic we wanted to talk about today. I hope that's what you had in mind. I tried to be as little clickbaity as possible because it's absolutely not an exaggeration today. So, <laughs> so I hope that's uh, I hope that helped. There was a couple people, Simo and I want to say it was Kieran, were asking about that. So. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, let's say Jim says, go look at any of the big name marketers who have a funnel where they give you their book for free just for entering your email and paying shipping. All they're doing is covering the cost of lead acquisition in a creative way. You don't mind participating in. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. So uh, I think what the, the shipping on it is like seven bucks. They probably pay like three or four bucks for shipping. And the other three or four bucks covers what it costs to get you to sign up. And now you're in their funnel, you're on their email list, you're seeing more of their ads and so on, you know? So like, yeah, I mean, that's that's what, exactly what you need to be doing with your marketplace sales, your freelance business, and literally anything, you know? And you don't necessarily have to uh, look, make a loss, but having a front end offer to bring people into your business is like that. Becker, one of the things he taught me was that that was why he put out info products like his, uh, his H comp course, the whole point of that was to get people on to market hero. Like the course itself was two grand, but he would charge that to, to, he didn't care if, with how well that did, as long as it broke even, because he knew that then he could get the people on in that course and on his list and then sell them up on market hero, which was his email program. And that was really the goal. So everybody does this and that's what Mark was talking about in this order. And that's what I've had success with doing in, uh, in my career as well. So that's kind of the topic for today. Let me know if there are any questions on that or anything else or anything else you'd like me to talk about or whatever. And again, pardon me for fidgeting. I'm just in a bit of pain today. So Craig says, Hey, Chris and all and Jim. <laughs> What's up, Craig? Glad to see you, buddy. Q 
got four people on YouTube and 10 on 11 on Facebook. A little, uh, little slow today. Seems like two o'clock is a better time for people than three. All right. I, uh, that was what I had for today. So if everybody's going to be shy, we don't have to stick around for the full hour. We've been here for about 20 minutes. But I'd like to, of course, talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. So if you've got any questions on that or anything else, let me know. <laughs> Brian says, no, no, no. <laughs> John says, when buying social signals, what point in your link building process do you do them? Foundation Web 2.0 niche edit. Or also, is it best to have them target the page or do you do power backlinks? So the way I use social signals is this. I will, if I'm doing, if I'm just launching a new site, I'll use them then because it makes sense, right? You would tell people that, hey, I just launched this site and you'd share it on Facebook and all those other places and it would get likes and so on. If you, then if you are doing major changes, same kind of thing. If you're doing heavy link building, whether it's a lot of links or whether it's some strong links, I do it then. But basically what you're doing is justifying other actions because if you're doing things, it should be showing interest. And the way that interest is gauged is through social. And so that's what so the way you use social signals alongside lots of link building or strong link building or major website changes. And that will enhance the experience and improve SEO. Doing them by themselves won't help, but doing them in concert with other things will. As far as what page, do it on whatever page you're working on at the moment. Brian says, no, 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 2 p.m. for you is 4 a.m. for me. Okay, well, we'll see. Stavros says, just wanted to suggest me various ways to drive traffic to Facebook group page. You're wanting to, grow, you're wanting to grow a Facebook group? Is that what you're asking? I just want to be clear. But if, if you are, then, I mean, the first thing you got to do is you're either going to have to have some sort of external source of folks, whether it's, you know, a list or whether it's customers or whether it's even friends and something, but you're going to have to have some way to do it. Otherwise you're going to have to do paid ads. If that's what you're asking, if not, let me know. We got Rodriguez Blancanelli on Instagram. Hello, Nelly. Philip asks website builders, what is stressful about the job? I'm not a website builder, so I can't say, but I know what would stress me about it is things like, I don't like this shade of blue. So that's like 12 hours to fix. Not really, but you know, nitpicky, what things that I would consider nitpicky that are important to clients, that would bother me. That would be stressful to me. But I think Jim will probably have a better answer than that. Stavro says yes to grow Facebook group. Yeah, I mean, to get started, you're going to at least get the first hundred or so people, you're going to have to have an external source, whether it's ads, whether it's an email list, whether it's existing customers, past customers, friends, whatever. And then you just have to get feed it content and get, get them engaged. Like the more engagement you have, the more that the group will get suggested by Facebook. So you're going to have to start by driving some folks in there from, from somewhere, whether it's from an ad or YouTube or your blog or whatever. And then once you get them in there, you got to start feeding them some content, whether it's videos, whether it's text posts, what, whatever it is that, that it's about, I guess it depends on the topic. And then just let's just keep the engagement going and keep feeding people into it. And then let Facebook do the rest for you. Uh, Brian says, trying to get information from clients and micromanagers. Yeah, micromanagers, I can definitely see being a problem, especially with something that that is so subjective. You know, one of my consulting clients had a web design client that was an architect and um, the, the architect sent him all these really, really deep. And keep in mind, this was only like a thousand dollar website build where he got 500 up front and then 500 at the end. He sent him after it was done doing exactly what he asked him, all these really specific things that he wanted to change. Like, suppose that this is the page and the logo is here. He said he would send him, I want an X number of pixels over here. 
things like that. And that would drive me absolutely bonkers. And then getting information from clients is a pain too. Like I have clients that are impatient with me to get for just for SEO to like get results. And then they don't give me the information I need in order to get those results for them. And then they blame me. So I've had that happen before. Jim says clients who think they know better is a big one. Apart from that, there's a certain aspect of getting burnt out of not being in the creative zone for a project. Also people who completely undervalue your time because they think it's as simple as drag and drop and anyone can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. How do people sell manual social signals so cheap? Logging into 5,000 Facebook accounts and liking posts manually sounds time consuming. I'm um, unless I'm misunderstanding what social signals are. I have a method that I personally developed to get that done. And I will not share that. I've never shared that with anybody, even like my closest people. Uh, so I can't, it can't, and I won't share that with anyone because it's what makes, it's why I can charge more for social signals. Most people are using software though, like using bot software to do it. So, uh, expert web design says for getting website content from clients, check out content snare. It's a game changer for web designers. That's interesting. I never heard of that one. Philip says, thanks. Brian says, yes, Jim. And when you finish, they want to know why they aren't on page one the afternoon, <laughs> right? I don't get too much of that because I am very, very upfront with what timeline people can expect before they ever pay me a nickel. Cause I'm not going to put up with that shit. Like I'm not going to have somebody calling me and asking me that kind of thing. I, I'll fire somebody if they don't get it. I don't care. I didn't get into this business to just have another boss. That's one of the, I always ask, people always ask what's some advice you could give. And I always say, keep your personal expenses low. That's one of the reasons too, is you can fire difficult clients when they do come up. Brian says, when you have a backlink in an anchor text, aren't you taking people away from your website to the opposition? Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean. Are you talking about when you link out? I'm not sure what you mean by a backlink in an anchor text. I'm not sure what you mean. Can you clarify just a little bit for me, Brian? All right, going on 29 minutes. We got Arthur Turchinike on Instagram. What's up, Arthur? When you link, say, back to Facebook. I mean, that's a possibility, sure, but outbound links are good for SEO and they're good for user experience too when done, done properly and done in a logical way. There was a time that even major brands were using their Facebook pages, like the main hub of their business instead of uh, their website because Facebook page reach used to be tremendous. It used to be in like up to like 2012, I want to say 2012, 2013, when you made a post on your page, every single one of your, your uh, fan page people saw it. So you can imagine how powerful that is, right? People like to bitch that Facebook killed the Facebook, reach of a fan page or the, you know, the organic reach that fan pages get, but they kind of had to because it was just too powerful and it was just too much. And you can still get that. I'm eventually going to get my, my secret friend who uh, is not a marketer, but seems to have cracked the code for that to do some training at some point. But I kind of get why they had to do it. But if you, if you go back and you watch that, so like Pepsi, I think was one of them was sending people to their Facebook page instead of their website because it was more powerful. 
the networking, the network king just joined on Instagram. What's up, the networking? Jim says just turned on a client to legit as a seller. They're super excited. They didn't know they could sell guest posts and just found out they've been missing out on potential revenue. People love little wins. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. I, uh, yeah, sometimes it just doesn't occur to people to use these other channels, you know? And there's a certain group of like elitists that won't use marketplaces too, you know, that but that's on them if they want to choose. And there's some people that can't get over the fact that they have to give 15% to get free traffic, you know, so whatever. But yeah, I mean, some people, it just doesn't occur to them. And maybe it's because I've been doing this for so long that that's always like my first thought, but that's good. And yeah, like literally anything you have that you can do, you can sell. Brian says, have you got some friends? Chris, how much do they cost? Whoa, body blow. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> wow, that stings. Thought we were cool, Brian. <laughs> Brian got bars. Make sure I don't miss anybody. Because that would be a shame. All righty, over the halfway mark. Not Mark, there's nobody named Mark. Halfway point. There's nothing Mark. It's not like the freaking floor in the grocery store. For legit.com, stop or remove review feedback feature for one year, six month old order, client changing review after 17 months. Yeah, that's something we're looking into. Charlene says, let the elitists be the ones that support we who sell on marketplaces. Totally, totally agree with that. And no, I never, I'll never understand why somebody would handicap their opportunity like that. You know what's cute is every so often we get a troll on these these streams that want to see if I will like read their troll comment and like put it on the screen. Like there was this one dick bag just a minute ago trying to say something and I I removed him and like I just don't get that. It's not the first time it's happened, but yeah, I mean he's banned now. So and they like try to delete their own comments sometimes too just so I can't like find them and ban them all out though. I always do. But it's just amazing how little of a life people have, you know, Alexis says, does anybody know if GoDaddy has any issues allowing PayPal from international countries, like for host plus domain payments? I don't know. I know I can pay them with my U S account, but I don't know, unfortunately. You could probably just ask them, though. Although their support is hot garbage, so I get why you don't want to. Alrighty, fam. What else can we get into for the next twenty minutes or so? You know, this cat's lucky that I didn't just put his put his uh, his profile on the screen and ask everybody to make him famous instead. Craig says, "Man, really not going to get that dot oh three from monetization." Yeah, I know, I know. 
I really need, I think not because of that, but I really do need to watch my mouth on these things because that, you know, that kind of thing is, is very offensive to some people. And, you know, we may think that that's silly, but you know, I try to be respectful of as many points of view as possible. There's one thing I've actually had to learn working with so many different cultures and countries is all the different little things that they value and how they respond in situations and things like that. You know, just for legit alone, I have India, uh, I have uh, Serbia, Egypt, America, of course, and one other country that's slipping my mind, Australia. Well, at least six countries that I talk to on a daily basis, you know. Do, do, do. Expert web design, just looking at your legit gigs. Could you tell me more about the Profit Academy? Seems good value for $5. Does Facebook group have many members? Yeah, it's like 150 members. Basically, I send out an email and make a Facebook post every single day about, well, let's say, not say every day, probably five, five times a week. I miss a couple days here and there. Um, whether it's about walking you through my day, like in what I'm working on, or um, what I, a technique I found that's working or some mindset stuff. But basically it's kind of just working side by side with me every day, you know, and getting an email and a, um, a, a Facebook post and having it all archived there for five bucks. So it's, um, I think it's a great value. And that, to be honest, that's the part, I enjoy that more than almost any other part of my business. And I plan on growing it in other way, other programs and things. But I think for the, the, the five bucks, you can't beat getting an email. I, like I could probably charge that for an email a month and I'm doing one almost every day. And like, we've been talking about discipline and mindset. And then we've also been talking about retargeting and traffic and building an audience. Uh, so I don't know, to me, it's a, a ridiculous price. And just to uh, give you a little history on that, the way that that came about was, you all, as you all know, I, I tell an amazing dad joke. And one day I made one in our Slack channel. That, and then after the half hour of laughter died down from everyone on my team, Jim said that I should create a service sending out a dad joke every day in an email. I was like, you know, I'm not going to do that. But I decided that it might be a cool thing to do a business email every day, you know. And then also I was taking Ty Lopez five minute mentor at the time. And that kind of like, it's kind of the same concept. So I was like, let me try this. And it's done very well. Like, I'm very happy with it. Jim says his son is losing all sort or learning all sorts of new words. Yeah, I really doubt that. <laughs> but you know, I will try to be nicer about that. Expert web design says, do you have any employees in the UK? I do not. No, I don't really work with anyone in the UK. Oh, and I just sent over a few topics for a consultation tomorrow. If you get a chance, check it out. Yeah, I will. I like to be as prepared as I can. Jade says, hey, Chris, is your state beginning to open? Missouri is beginning to in the Kansas City area. Yes, most everything is here is here is open or will be on Monday, including, and this is big news, barbershops and hair salons so I can finally get a haircut. I'm really excited about that. Back to original topic. Let's have a challenge for viewers to do a short list of low cost service to high cost. For instance, write five email sequence, 10 email sequence, monthly emails for customers could go on to other content if I choose. Yeah, exactly. 
It's a great idea. If everybody else here wants to uh, play along with that, go go right, not play along, contribute <laughs> along with that. I think that's a great idea. In fact, uh, I'm gonna say like a month ago, Georgie and I got on a Skype call or a Zoom call and looked at all of our services and, and found ways to, I think I talked about it on the channel actually, found ways to like optimize the extras and add different upsells to each one and so on. So, and that's worked like a boss. So yeah. One moment here. All right. Brian says, what's the easiest way to make a glow worm happy? Cut off its tail. <laughs> It'll be delighted. <laughs> MK says, what's the best business to start during the ongoing thing in the world hype? Freelancing, without a doubt, because every, because, well, it depends on your situation, I suppose. But freelancing, I think, is the opportunity for those that have lost their job or are now working at home from their job and things like that. Uh, beyond that, I would say web design seems to be really, really cherry right now as well. Brian says, sometimes I get this message after I post here. It's annoying. How can I stop it? Instantly send this as a message to Chris and Mark. I don't know. I wondered why some people were sending me questions in messages, though. So that explains that. But I don't know. It must be a Facebook thing. John says, my homepage was originally ranking page two for a keyword. And I recently created an inside page to target that same keyword instead. Any advice to make this transition smooth? Uh, we first of all, I would I would accept that I'm probably going to have some downtime on that keyword as you do it, but you're just going to have to de-optimize the homepage as much as you can. So if your uh, keyword is red toasters, you just want to remove any re uh, any mention of red toasters from your homepage, and and possibly of red and or toaster if possible depends you know on the situation, but. And then if you have links that are pointing to it that help influence that page to rank for that keyword, see if you can remove or change those as well. But basically, you just have to make Google realize that there's nothing to do with that keyword on the home page. And then, of course, do a great job of optimizing the inner page for that same keyword. I really hate Instagram. Not, not the people on Instagram, you guys are great, but as a platform, I think it's very limiting. All right, we've been here for almost 45 minutes now. Still got a decent amount of folks on, although not as good a turnout as usual. I'm about to sneeze, so forgive me for that in advance. <laughs> Hand sanitizer. All right, guys, any other questions, comments, thoughts, sayings? I don't recommend this stuff, unfortunately. I find that it's not very tasty. What are your future goals for the legit platform? 
I've said before that I want it to be the Amazon of digital freelance services. I'm not entirely sure what that means. I also want it to be a complete business. So I want it to be basically where you, okay, like for example, if you were to go sign up for ClickFunnels, you now have a way to build an online business with everything but the traffic. So you, you know, you can create your funnel, your pages, your marketing, but you don't have a traffic source. I want legit to be as build up as, as much of a business in a box as things like click funnels, but also you get traffic and it's all free. So that's kind of, I know that's kind of vague, but those are kind of two of the big goals. What's better to rank in cities for local service, one city per domain, or can domain rank in all cities? Are you talking about organic? If you mean, if for, uh, Organically, I, you can build one site and just rank it and just create interpages for as many cities as you like. If you mean maps, you have to, to do it the right way. You have to have a real uh, location in each place. But you can still do it all with one website, assuming that those are real locations. Expert Web Design says, I'll be joining Profit Academy soon. Sounds great. It is. I'm, I'm really happy with it, I, for, especially for something that started on a whim. Uh, I think it's a great, a great program. I'm of course going to provide the link because, you know, but yeah, I, I think you'll enjoy it. I think everyone that's been in it has gotten a lot out of it. And I have people that have been in it for six, eight months now, you know, and they're still only 40 bucks in, you know? So if you get one thing from it ever, it's paid itself off. And I, I really enjoy it. It's almost like, uh, <laughs> I'm going to show how old I am here, but if you remember like uh, Doogie Hauser at the end of each episode, it would have him writing it on his great gigantic computer <laughs> with uh, of like what he was thinking or what he was doing that day. Sometimes that's kind of how it feels for me. Yeah. There's the link to it. If anybody wants to check it out, five bucks a month. I mean, most of it, that's why about 17 cents a day. Philip says, night, night. Night, Philip, thanks for joining us. Jim says, do you use TikTok slash believe in getting your brand on it? Um, I uploaded parts of my YouTube videos to it before, but it was too much trouble because like, you have to upload it to like a Dropbox or something and download the video onto your phone and then put it on TikTok. But I think it's probably, Marketers haven't found a way to ruin it yet, but they will eventually. So I do think it's a good idea to get a, take advantage of it while you can and maybe get ahead of the curve. I do think it's a great platform for exposure, but if it doesn't natively fit your brand, the people who try to shoehorn themselves in it or alter their persona just to get some views are doing more harm than good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Right now it's just for your kids and stuff. But, and if you have a niche where that makes sense, then that's great. But I don't know. Marketers will eventually find a way to ruin it though. If I can't change the links from my homepage to my inside page, would it be better to disavow or leave them? Just leave them and make up the difference with on page and other off the page links. TikTok al allows you to upload video straight from your desktop now. Oh, awesome. I'll start doing that then. Not because I expect anything out of it, but I just figure, you know, what the heck. Hector says, Chris, I followed uh, other several SEO dudes. Have to say you are the one that has provided the most valuable info. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, uh, you know, I try to remember things that have helped me and just share them when I can, you know? Uh, I don't know. I don't really know what else to say other than thank you. All right, guys, we got about 10 minutes left. If you think this is helpful, join the Academy. 
<laughs> thank you, Craig. I, uh, yeah, I, um, thank you. I, I, I never know what to say. It doesn't make me sound pompous. I just thank, I appreciate that people find anything I do to be of help to them because that's what I truly believe life is all about is being as helpful as possible. Jim's being a funny man, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna indulge that by putting it on the screen. Hey, though, can you do me a favor, Jim, and let ask, let me know? Am I allowed to come play in the the playhouse once it gets born or built? One second, guys. All right, sorry about that. Uh, Jim says, aside from being a people, uh, yeah, whatever. Got to start learning about this SEO stuff. Be able to keep up with you. Yeah, if you want, there's always plenty of places to learn SEO, including Superstar SEO Academy at superstarseo.com slash monthly. Jim says, well played. He says, hey, Chris, I'm legit thinking about putting in on Air, putting it on Airbnb. <laughs> I guess Airbnb is having some real problems. I know that wasn't that was a joke and it wasn't your point, but I, I was reading about that earlier. Randy says profit profit academy is terrific. Absolutely something I look forward to every day. Awesome! I'm glad that it's helping you too, uh, Randy. I appreciate that, buddy.
Uh, Craig says, where do you go to learn about SEO news, updates, info, et cetera? I don't go to other people. Other people come to me. <laughs> but no, for real, I get what I get from testing and from working things out with uh, Jeff and Scott for the most part. I don't really read like, blogs or channels or anything like that. But, and that's not to say that any of them aren't any good. I just, I at this point, that it's easier for me to try to, to crack the code myself, you know, whether it's uh, experimenting or working with Jeff and Scott. But I, I don't really do a lot of SEO training anymore. I do my own implementation. Jim says, I enjoy my daily readings from Chris, always worth a read and not shy to share valuable info, even when it isn't always glorious. Yeah, I, that's kind of what, what was my original vision for it is seeing the good and the bad, you know, warts and all of what it's like to just go through this every day. And hopefully that like, I don't know, hopefully it, it shows you the shit that you don't, I've already, given up on monetizing this video. It shows you the shit that you don't see on Instagram, you know, when people are standing next to their Porsche or whatever, or whatever people consider a nice car. I don't know cars. You know, it's that sometimes things suck. You know, I wrote one a couple weeks ago, at like four in the morning when we were having trouble with legit about how you have to deal with it when these things come up. Sometimes it's a tactic. Sometimes it's just, man, I'm not doing very good on being disciplined. What, you know, I, it's just basically as if you were hanging out in the office with me every day. So hopefully that, uh, hopefully some, it sounds like they have, hopefully some folks have found it beneficial. So if you want to jump in on that, you certainly can. Brian says, I start my day with legit in some way or form, especially logging onto my platform to check a job section and reviewing my seller platform and adjust its content. Emails each day really does help. And when you're on your own, it really helps. Thanks, Chris. Oh, thank you, Brian. I appreciate that you occasionally reply with a nice message or some input too. So I, I find that two-way communication to be valuable as well. So I'm glad you're getting something from it. And thank you is all I can really say. And now I'm going back to get screenshots. So bear with me while I collect some social proof. <laughs> Poor Georgie. All right, guys, we only have a minute or so left. Any last minute questions or things you want to talk about? If not, that's fine. Oh, oh, tomorrow, let me plug. Tomorrow, join us for Freelancers Happy Hour, Freelancers Fastlane Happy Hour. Jim will be on with me at 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. That will be here on Facebook or YouTube, as well as at Freelance, I cannot remember this <laughs> URL for some reason, FreelanceHappyHour.com. That'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll talk, we're going to be, review a whole bunch of profiles and services and just talk about everything with freelancing. Instagram, thanks for showing up. We'll see you next time. I don't mean to blow Instagram off like that, but they put a timer on it and it ends. And then I don't get to share it. Come on, why do you have to make it complicated? All right, well, we'll have to come back to that. <laughs> so Brian says... <laughs> What do you call a belt made of watches? A waste of time. I'm pretty sure I've used that one before. <laughs> I 
Oh my. <laughs> oh boy. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm laughing at something I just saw on the legit job board that Jim sent me. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, that's all I got for you today. Join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern at FreelanceHappyHour.com. Jim and I will be on where we're going to review a whole bunch of legit profiles. If you're in the legit Facebook group and you want to get yours reviewed too, there's a pinned post in there that you can drop it on. Uh, figure out what you want out of life and go out and get it because you owe it to yourself and you owe it to the world. Peace.